morning or is it just afternoon? Um, just thought I'd post this. I got asked um, a couple of really good questions yesterday, sort of evening. I had a, a, a customer come over, a new customer, and um, we were talking about bats and my business. And one of the questions was with the big fad of uh, big bats at the minute. Is uh, is watching Australia David Warner how big his bats were, and uh, asked how I got how they got them like that, and why I wasn't interested in doing that or couldn't do it. Um, well, the reason being is to for me I don't know all the science behind it. I'm not into that. I just know what I do is working. Um, but common sense comes into play with me. <clears throat> so, um, what they're tending to do now is the, the drying the willow out to with an inch of its life. So, anything I get from rights has a moisture content somewhere between 8% and sometimes about 14 it's generally 12 but sometimes I get a few about 14% in moisture. <clears throat> but, the drying them I've come across bats that are down to three, four percent, and and I'm sure there'll be some that are less. And uh, it's obviously just to make them lighter, get every bit of moisture out of them that they can. So, what? How does that affect the willow? Well, willow is a natural product. It's like anything else. You know, we need water. We need moisture in us. Um, a piece of chamois leather is a, is a great example. If it's dried, it cracks, it's brittle. If it's got moisture in it, it's supple, it's got some body in it. It's the same with the cricket bat. You know, that willow, although it's been cut and it's, you know, it's dead, it's, it's got moisture in it which helps protect that piece of wood. It holds it together. It's only natural. So, we're having these huge bats, which uh, is a confidence booster, really. But it doesn't make them hit it any farther. They're just training to hit the ball nowadays. But the issue for for the general public who's having bats like that is you're paying the money for them. They're not. And in my mind, actually, the ones that I've witnessed the performance of them only lasts for a very short while. But that's always going to be the case because the bat only lasts for a very short while. Um, but the ones that do tend to, that do last a little bit longer tend to just go dead. They die. And in my mind that's because they've got no moisture in them. In fact, um, last year was, I was down at the county ground when Australia were there and uh, talking to my old teammate uh, Michael Duanito and he was batting coach and he was chuffed a bit with I mean, David Warner's bats because they got a couple of really good uh, fielding bats every month because they just snap. So for the public especially do you want to be paying three, four, five hundred pound out to, for a bat that's going to keep breaking from a business point of view that's no good for my business. Bats that keep breaking, you know, touch wood, you're always going to get um, one or two that break through. It's, it's wood at the end of the day. But the fact is that um, you don't want to be replacing bats all the time. And you, you don't want the customers to have bats breaking either. So that's my sort of thoughts on on dried willow because they've got to be you know they'll just kiln drying them with within an inch of the life I would imagine and the other question was uh, made me think actually I didn't really have an answer at the time but uh, it seen my business sort of grow in a short space of time this guy and uh, just asked what my thoughts were that made my business stand out as it is. It's a small business run out of a little workshop that's making it uh, shine, really. 
and I mean I've got to be honest it surprised me how quickly it's moved on but um, I think one of the things is that I do it myself the only things I don't make myself are my handles first I ain't got time to do them secondly it's hard to get the quality of the cane now to, to ship over and because I'm doing everything myself there's only so much you can do and there's loads of bat companies out there uh, that are either just labelling bats um, which means that they're getting willow sent to them in basically in a cleft form here's sort of just handled up but in a cleft form ready handled, ready pressed for them and well they're not going to get the best of the best you know no company is going to send out their best stuff to other companies or if they do they're, they're losing out but um, but also because I'm doing that myself from, from start to finish my quality control is spot on every time so I won't I know I won't be sending anything out of here that I wouldn't have used as a professional cricketer or been proud to use as a professional cricketer um, and that's the difference I think I've thought about it overnight and I think that is the difference because there's there's loads of companies that profess that they're actually handmade bats in England they might well be but they're not going to be handmade by a lot of the companies there's not many that many people doing it um, so to to have sat down sat down myself and learnt the process um, has paid off. It's taken a lot of time to do to get it right, and uh, a lot of uh, financial investment as well to do it because you know you're supporting yourself. <clears throat> but uh, I think that is the key is is the fact that you know I've been lucky enough just to to learn it from the basics, teach myself from the basics and now every piece of willow that, that I put out, not just the bats, my kit, is all based round what cricketers want and what I wanted as a professional cricketer and what other players that I came across while I was playing and still talk to want as professional cricketers. So I think that's perhaps the key thing because you know everyone can be selling bats anyone can sell bats but there's a way of doing it and uh, <clears throat> my mission I've got to be honest my mission isn't to be a big brand I'm not interested in being a big brand I, I take it a little bit like um, I did my playing career I was never the greatest cricketer to be honest you know I, I did okay but I made the most of what I got a mile and I, it never stopped me wanting to be the best, but um, I look at the, the, my cricket bats now, I look at it in that same vein. I'm striving to be one of the best or the best bat makers in the world. That's my ambition. Whether it makes me money, if it makes me a living, great. You know, it's got to make me a living because I'm doing it. But... Um, I'm not interested in being a big brand, I'm not interested in flooding the market. I just want to be happy that I'm putting stuff out there that I know is the best out there. Or at least up there with the best. And uh, you know, there's always someone going to knock you off that top tier and that's the same in, in anything you do. But 